Today we're going to talk about design tokens. When we ask people about design tokens, not everyone is familiar with them, and that's okay. So let's try to understand what they are and what they do. If you look at our website, for example, adobe.com, it's rendered by the browser and what's powering this, this website is code. Right? So it's HTML, CSS, JavaScript. In this case, you can see I have even CSS variables here. And if you look closer, you see that there's a color there, this blue that we used. This color has a key and it has a value and the value is hex, hexadecimal. If that color is hard coded into one website, that's fine. You probably have to update that value a couple in a couple places and it's not a big deal. But then if you start adding more platforms, web, mobile, and then iOS, Android, and all that, you have to have more places to update your color. And not only that, iOS and Android, they represent colors in a different way. So if you add more platforms now, let's say Flutter and, and, and all that, it's gonna start hurting your design consistency and it's gonna become more expensive to make changes to your color. So there's this concept called design token, which technically is a key and a value that can also have a key referencing another key, what we call alias. But tokens are a lot more than fancy variables, right? They describe intent, design decisions, they can store design attributes, they are platform agnostic. They're not opinionated about a specific platform. They can be that single source of truth because they're agnostic, they can live in one place, and they can help design scale and be consistent. Tokens have keys, values, and types. The tokens can be colors, they can be numeric, like size, line height, opacity, spacing. They can be text-based, like an easing curve, a media query, and they can also be Boolean, like is this tappable or not via true or false. And there's a lot more types of tokens out there. You can also have some collections of tokens. In this case, we have typography that has family, size, and weight tokens. And shadows uh, are another example of collections. So back to our color, you have your key, your agnostic key, and the hex representation of that as your value. There's this thing called build system that's code that can take agnostic tokens and when you run the build system, it can convert that agnostic information of key and value into platform specific code. In this case, we're seeing our little blue token there being converted, being transformed into a CSS variable to be rendered by a browser. And if you add more platforms by using a build system, if the build system supports more platforms, you can have all the different representations of your color for each platform. So this gives you a lot more power when you need to, uh, when you need to update things. Design tokens are great. They improve design consistency, not only for end users that will be using your products and you know that familiarity drives usage, but also for your designers and developers building the experiences. It will reduce maintenance and update costs. They can be compiled as we discussed using build systems and two examples here are Style Dictionary by Amazon and Theo by Salesforce. They help design scale across multiple platforms and devices and they can be the bridge between design and development. But they're not perfect. Working with tokens requires domain expertise. You have to know how to use the build system you have to know how to consume different APIs. Each API probably uses a different format. And a lot of people that work with tokens have to write the tokens manually, either using JSON or YAML or XML. Some people are using Google Sheets or a spreadsheet really to create and map your tokens. They're being tackled differently by different players, different tools, different teams, and they're not always connected to components. So thinking of these problems, we created this extension for Visual Studio Code called Adobe XD, and it allows teams to create and consume design system packages. Design system packages are this new open format to help teams share design system information across tools. 
It's shareable, it's Git friendly, and it's platform agnostic. And you can find more information about DSP in the spec on GitHub. There are different companies writing DSP, creating different DSPs, supporting different DSPs. So hopefully this helped you a little bit on understanding what tokens are and what tokens do. Thank you for watching.